This is my beginning algebra course. Today we're going to simplify algebraic fractions. If you haven't done the homework completely and correctly from the last class, do that homework before watching this video. We're going to start by doing some pre-algebra review. In this course, we've multiplied algebraic expressions quite a bit, but we haven't done much uh, division. We're going to uh, divide some expressions here. And uh, that's the same thing as simplifying algebraic fractions because remember, um, a fraction line is the same thing as division. It's interpreted as division. So let's start with uh, <clears throat> our first problem. In this problem, we're just going to use the fundamental principle of fractions and divide both 10 and 15 by 5 to get 2 over 3. And when you're dividing power expressions, you just subtract the power. So 6 minus 4 is 2. And the reason the x's end up on top is because there's more x's on top than on the bottom. So the leftover x's that don't cancel out, they end up on the top. All right, so number 2, we have, let's see, um, negative 8 over 2. So we can use the same principle, divide both these numbers by 2. But we can also interpret this as simply negative 8 divided by 2. So that would obviously be negative 4. And we're going to subtract the powers. 5 minus 2 is 3. But the y's are going to end up on the bottom because there's more y's on the bottom than on the top. Whoops. <clears throat> Malfunction there. All right. So uh, that's the answer to that problem. Again, we're just doing a pre-algebra review right now. <clears throat> So we're going to divide both these numbers by 11, and we get 2 over negative 3. And we get a and b to the 5th uh, power. And for number 4, um, if we divide both of these by 16, then we, get, we just get 1 over 2. And a negative divided by a negative would just be a positive. And by the way, you can take this negative sign and you can you can move it up here if you want, but it, we, really, we, we really don't have to. <clears throat> so uh, x over 9, or x to the ninth over x to the 6, and y to the 6, and so on and so forth. Um, so why don't you try uh, number 5? And when you come back, we'll do it together. All right, we're back. So that problem should be, we're actually, we're not going to have a fraction on that one. We're just going to end up with negative 4x squared. You could write over 1 if you wanted to, but that's not really uh, traditional. So you got the right answer on that problem. Good job. So that was a different one. Uh, try number 6, and when you come back, we'll do it together. All right, we're back. Um, let's see here, we should have negative 9 over 10, and then y to the 4th in the bottom. So if you got that answer, good job. All right, try number 7, and when you come back, we'll do it together. All right, we're back. Divide both numbers by 7, and you get 6 over 9. And a to the 4th, and the b's, they just cancel out because they have the same power. <clears throat> But uh, we can continue um, because we can divide 6 and 9 by 3 to get 2 over 3. And we keep our a to the fourth. So if you got that answer, good job. If you got this answer, that's correct. It's just not simplified uh, completely. You have to simplify completely. All right, so on to number 8. Try number 8, and when you come back, we'll do it together. All right, we're back. Remember, a negative divided by a negative is a positive. So if you got that answer, good job. All right, so that was the pre-algebra review. So now we're going to get to the beginning algebra material. Um, and what you're going to find is that uh, we're going to use 
pretty much all the principles that we, we learned in previous uh, classes regarding factoring. So we're going to reduce this uh, expression, but the problem is we really cannot cancel out these x's. A lot of students will try to cancel these x's out, but the problem is we have, um, we have a subtraction, or we'd say addition of negative numbers on the top, and we have uh, addition, or uh, whatever you want to call it, subtraction on the bottom. So, and again, uh, adding a negative number is the same thing as subtracting a positive number. So that's why, you know, it doesn't matter wh what you want to call it. But you can only cancel out when you have a product. See, these are products. 42 times A times B. 63 times A to the fifth times B. And you have uh, 36 times X to the fifth and negative 9 times X cubed. So you can, you can cancel out. The problem is here you don't have multiplication. You have subtraction. So you can't just cancel out these x's. It doesn't work that way. So what you have to do is we're going to use, again, we're going to factor. We're going to use the principles we learned in previous classes. If you notice, this is a quadratic expression. So we can factor that to a pair of parentheses. We have x and x and negative 5 and positive 2. What two numbers multiply to negative 10 and add up to negative 3? So I think that's correct. Negative 5 and, and 2. Negative 5 times 2 is negative 10. And negative 5 plus 2 is negative 3. So I factored that correctly. And I'll just rewrite the denominator. So now we have a product. We have this expression times this expression. So that means we can, can, we, we, we can cancel out common factors. So we're going to cancel out x minus 5 and x minus 5 because they're the, the, we have an x minus 5 on the top and we have an x minus 5 on the bottom. So we're going to cancel those out. I'll just leave that color there to show we're canceling out. And we're left with x plus 2. But because we're not multiplying x plus 2 by anything anymore, we can just leave it as x plus 2 without parentheses. And you don't really need to write this intermediate step. So that's pretty much what we're going to be doing for the entire day. Of course, it's going to get more difficult. We're going to do a lot of different types of factoring, but that's really the principle for this entire class. So we're going to do a lot of different problems. We're going to do a lot of review. Um, that's how this course works. You're going to constantly review the, uh, the types of factoring that we learned and just constantly again and again and again and again. You're going to review the, the previous uh, material. That's the way a course is, a math course is supposed to be designed at this, at this uh, when it comes to algebra. All right, so let's see here. Um, let's try number 10. So I'm just going to rewrite the top because I can't do anything to the top. I can't factor the top. And, uh, but I can factor the bottom. That's going to be a quadratic expression. And we have plus 5 and plus 6. Because 5 times 6 is 30, and 5 plus 6 is 11. So we're going to um, cancel out the x plus 6. And this is a little bit different, because now we don't have anything in the top. We have x plus 5 in the bottom, so we just have to write 1 at the top. And again, you don't have to write parentheses around x plus 5 because it's not multiplied by anything anymore. All right, let's try another one. So now we have two quadratic expressions, one on the top and one on the bottom. So we're going to need uh, four pair pairs of parentheses. So what two numbers multiply to 20 and add up to 9? And then what two numbers multiply to 4 and add up to 5? So there we go. Um, so now, of course, again, we can just cancel out the, the common factors. And if there are no common factors, that means you really can't do anything. You just, you just leave it. But you're not gonna, I don't think you're going to find problems like that in this, uh, in this class. Um, unless I made a mistake when I gave you the, uh, the problem or when I wrote the problem. All right, on to the next one. So again, this is what we're going to be doing for this entire class. It's just uh, factoring and then canceling out.
That's what it means to simplify um, an algebraic fraction. So we have plus 8 and minus 4. 8 times negative 4 is negative 32. And 8 plus negative 4 is 4. Again, this is just all, this is all review stuff. All right, and um, 5 times negative 4 um, is negative 20. And 5 plus negative 4 is positive 1. So again, we're going to cancel out, <clears throat> cancel out the the like uh, the, the common factors, and you're left with x plus eight over x plus five, and we don't need the parentheses. All right, so hopefully you're uh, starting to get the hang of this now. It's uh, the concepts are pretty easy, so why don't you try number thirteen, and when you come back, we'll do it together. All right, we're back. And by the way, if you get any ideas about trying to do this in your head without showing the work, uh, get those ideas out of your head quickly. you got to show all the work. So there we go. And we're going to uh, cancel out. And we're left with 1 over x plus 5. So we've got 1 over x plus 5. Good job. Why don't you try uh, number 14, and when you come back, we'll do it together. All right, we're back. So factor the top, and just rewrite the bottom. And let's see, we have negative 6 and positive 2, I think it's going to be. And, of course, the... Uh, and again, you see how on the bottom we don't write parentheses because we're not multiplying x minus 6 by anything. But in the top we need parentheses because we're multiplying it by x plus 2. Anyway, so let's cancel out the common factor. And we're left with x plus 2. And again, x plus 2 is by itself, so we don't need parentheses. We're not multiplying it by anything. All right, so uh, why don't you try 15, and when you come back we'll do it together. All right, we're back. So let's see here. I think it's going to be um, I think it's going to be four and nine at the top, and four and three in the bottom. Yep, that looks correct. And then we just cancel out the common factors. Whoops. So if you got x plus 9 over x plus 3, good job. Now again, don't get any ideas about reducing 9 over 3. Okay, 9 over 3 would be 3, but the problem is you have addition. That only works if you have factors. See, 9 is not a factor of this expression. In order for it to be a factor, you would have to have 9x over 3x. Then you could reduce it to 3, and the x's would cancel out. Because if you multiply 9 times x, 9, 9 and x, then, you, then they're factors. But we're not multiplying. We're, we're adding x, x and 9. So please understand that you can't just reduce these uh, like you'd reduce this expression. Um, so you just have to leave it as x plus 9 over x plus 3. There's nothing you can do there. That's one of the most common mistakes for uh, algebra students. All right, so if you got 15 right, good job. Uh, try number 16, and when you come back, we'll do it together. All right, we're back. And let's see, we have minus 5, or actually plus 5, minus 2, and let's see, that would be uh, positive 8, and minus 2, and cancel out, and we're left with x plus 8 over x plus 5. So if you got that one right, good job. All right, so number uh, 17 is going to be a little different. 
because we have this little annoying coefficient here on the on the on the first term, the, the squared term on the bottom. So let's do this one together. The top is just going to be the same type of thing. And uh, looks like it's going to be minus five and plus two. So that's similar to the one up here we just did. We just did, except opposite signs. And on the bottom, it's going to be much more difficult. We cannot ask what number multiplies to six and adds up to seven. Well, I I, I take that back. We're, we are asking what numbers multiply to six, but they're not going to add up to seven necessarily because this 2 uh, complicates things. So now we ask what two numbers multiply to 2, so it's just going to be 2x obviously and x, because <clears throat> it's 2 times 1, and then what two numbers multiply to 6. So there's two options. We could choose um, 2 and 3, that might work, or we could choose 1 and 6. We really don't know. So this, we have to use the O and the I of FOIL, just like we did in the previous classes. So O would be 4x and I would be 3x, and you add them up and you get 7x. So that works. It just so happened that I chose the correct one um, on the first uh, try. So now we cancel out the common factors, and again, they're factors because you're multiplying, and you end up with x minus 5 over 2x plus 3. So if you got that answer, good job. All right, so why don't you try number 18? And when you come back, we'll do it together. All right, we're back. Same type of problem. Um, I think we're going to have plus 6 and minus 5. Um, and let's try um, plus 9 and plus 2 and it looks like that's uh, not gonna work if you try O and I, O would be 4x and I would be 9x so 4x plus 9x is 13x, we don't want 13x, we want 15x so let's try switching, let's try 2 over here, 9 over here O would be 18x and I would be 2x, that would be 20x, it didn't work so it looks like 2 and 9 are not gonna work, so let's try 3 and 6. I have a feeling, well, I have a feeling that's going to work because we have x plus 6 up here. And that's an important point. Uh, obviously, uh, I, I designed these problems so that you could cancel out a common factor, so you know that it's got to be one of these. So, um, again, I'm just showing the process of how to factor these, but uh, you can kind of cheat a little bit and you can look at these factors and then I'll tell you. So, I, I got a feeling that x plus 6 is going to be correct. But just to be sure, let's check the O and I. So 12x is O outside terms, and 3x is the inside terms. Add those up, and you get 15x. All right, so now we're going to uh, cancel out the common factor. And we're left with x minus 5 over 2x plus 3. So if you got that answer, good job. So number 19 is really just the same thing, so try uh, number 19, and when you come back, we'll do it together. All right, we're back. I'm going to try negative 4 and 5. But uh, I don't think that's going to be correct because we need we probably need a minus sign there because we have a mi x minus 5 on the top. So I'll change that to a 3x plus 4. And I should write more legibly. So if you look at your, if you take screenshots, you can use these uh, pages for your notes. So we, we have to double check though. So O on the bottom is negative 15x and I is positive 4x. Add them together and you get negative 11x. So that works. And of course, we just cancel out the like terms as usual. Or excuse me, not not the like terms, but the common factors. That's that's what we call them, common factors. They're not they're not really like terms. It's I'm thinking of something else. <clears throat> All right. So if you got that answer, good job. So try uh, number twenty. When you come back, we'll do it together. 
All right, we're back. And let's see, we have negative four and negative one. That, that problem, that uh, factorization seems uh, familiar. Um, let's see here, let's try. Uh, um, minus two and actually plus two and minus four. Again, I'm cheating because I know it's probably gonna might be minus four. So let's use, let's check O and I in the numerator. O and I of foil, negative 12x and 2x is negative 10x. So that works. So again, just cancel out the common factors. And again, I'm, I'm just color coding these just to show you which ones I'm canceling out. Now, if you wanna show that you're canceling out on your paper, you don't really have to cross out, but if you want to, you just lightly cross out. It's kind of hard for me to do it because I'm using a, a digital pen, but you want to lightly cross out. Um, it's really better for me to use the uh, the highlighters, but you can just lightly cross those out so you know that they uh, they go away. So if you got that answer, good job. Now for number 21, we're doing something a little different because we have a difference two squares. Remember we learned how to factor the difference two squares? So if a difference two squares, you just put two pairs of parentheses and we have x and x and what two, what number multiplied by itself equals 25, well that would be five and then you just put a plus and minus. It's always a plus and minus when you have a difference of two squares. And on the bottom, you just factor like, like, uh, like usual. And as you can see, we have a common factor. So cancel out those factors and you get the following answer so on and so forth. So that problem was exactly the same, no difference whatsoever except we just had the difference of two squares. Alright, so 22, why don't you try 22 and when you come back we'll do it together. Alright, we're back. So what number multiplied by itself equals 49? Well that would be 7 obviously and then you put your plus and minus and it's going to be 7 and 3 in the bottom and we're going to cancel out we cannot cancel out the x minus 7 we can only cancel out the x plus 7 so if you got that answer very good um, all right, so let's see here what's going on with number 23. That's yeah, pretty much the same thing. Uh, but let's do this one together. So let's try 2x. See, on this problem, it's a little different because now we have two options. We have to figure out what number times itself equals 4. So we could put 2x times 2x is 4x squared. Or we could put 4x times x, which is still 4x squared. So we don't know which one it's going to be. Now, what two numbers multiply to negative 35? That we'll just try negative 7 and 5. In fact, that's the only op the only the only options other than 1 and 35. So let's try the again. We, we don't have to do f and l of foil, but we have we have to do o and i because we set it up so that f and l work. So we don't need to check those. But o of foil is uh, 10x, and i of foil is negative 14x. And so that obviously does not work because that would be negative 4x. We don't want negative 4x. We want 20, negative 23x. So we're not even close. Let's see. So let's, let's see what happens when we switch these. Well, actually, that nothing's going to happen. That's going to be the same thing. So it looks like 2x and 2x are not going to work. So let's try 4x and x. All right, so um, O is 20x, I is negative 7x, that would be 13x, so that doesn't work. So let's try switching these, let's try switching the 5 and the 7. O is 28x and I is negative 5x, 
28x minus 5x is 23x. Uh, so bingo, we got the right number. But the problem is we got a positive 20, 23x. We want a negative 23x. So we have to change this to a positive. And we have to switch that to a negative. And uh, so the top is factored. And the bottom, we have the difference of two squares. So what number times itself is 16? That would be 4. And what number times itself is 25? That would be 5. And you can see we have uh, common factors. I'm not really writing very legibly there. It's kind of sideways. Um, and again, it's plus and minus. So you can see what's going on here. We have a common factor, 4x plus 5. x minus 7 over 4x minus 5 is the final answer. So if you got that answer, you're doing well. Good job. All right, so why don't you try number 24. When you come back, we'll do it together. All right, we're back. We have the difference of two squares in the numerator. And a quadratic in the denominator. And let's try O. O in the denominator would be 6x, and I would be negative 2x, and that would be 4x. And negative 4, so it looks like it works. So 3x minus 2 and 3x minus 2, cancel those out. So if you got that answer, good job. All right. So um, try number 25, and when you come back, we'll do it together. All right, we're back. And the uh, x minus 4 cancels out. We're left with x minus 7. So in that problem, we were left with uh, just a... Uh, a normal expression, no fraction. All right, so why don't you try number 26, and when you come back, we'll do it together. All right, we're back. And I think I did that wrong. So that didn't work. I got to try something else here. How about two and three? So again, the the factor on the top was kind of a clue that I must have done something wrong. All right. So now we fact we cancel out the x plus two, and we end up with one over x plus three. So if you got that, good job. All right, uh, try numbers 27, and when you come back, we'll do it together. All right, we're back. Cancel out the numerator. We have a common factor, and we're left with x minus 7 again. Just a coincidence, it ended up being the same problem, the same answer as the previous uh, couple problems. All right, so we got that answer. Good job. Uh, try number 28. When you come back, we'll do it together. All right, we're back. Oops, that should be a 2. Just give me a four. And there you go. So if you got that answer, good job. So now we're going to go to something called the negative one rule. 
And in my experience, this rule really is not taught enough because um, it's an important concept and you may uh, see it uh, in upper math courses. So uh, let's go into this. It's, it's, it's a e very easy rule. It's nothing, nothing big. You've actually already l used it uh, in, in previous classes without even knowing you used it. So first, let's factor the numerator. That's the difference of two squares. What number times itself is 81? That would be 9. And then, of course, you have a plus and minus whenever you have the difference of two squares. And on the bottom, you have 9 minus x. So there's a big problem here. We would like to uh, cancel out these terms, but we can't because these terms are not the same. This is x minus 9, and this is 9 minus x. They're not the same. But we can try a, uh, a little math trick here, and we can factor out a negative 1 from the bottom expression. This is going to seem like I'm cheating when I do this, but, but uh, this is totally, totally legal. You're going to factor out a negative 1, and it's going to become negative 9 plus x. Now, again, why, why can I do that? Well, if you use distribution, let me move this down a little bit so you can see what's going on. If you use distribution and multiply back using the distributive rule, then you get 9 minus, 9 minus x. So all we did was just go backwards. We factored out a negative 1. That's called the negative 1 rule. And so now at this point, even though that these terms are kind of rearranged, it's actually, it's actually the same factor. Um, the, 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 uh, the terms are just, are just switched. But it's the same thing. Negative 9 plus x is the same thing as x minus 9. Now, if you if you don't like the fact that it's uh, uh, switched like that, you can rewrite it. And I'm going to write this down here. Gosh, I'll just move that over. You can just rewrite it if you want and switch the x and the, and the negative 9. And then you can see that it's the same thing. These two terms, the green terms here, are the same terms. And then you just and then you just cancel out. But I'm not going to do all that switching because it's just going to take more time and it's not really necessary. So we're going to go ahead and cancel out the x minus 9 and the negative 9 plus x because they're the same thing. And then we're going to be left with x plus 9 over negative 1. Now, um, we don't want to leave it as x plus 9 over negative 1. Uh, there, we would like to put it in a, a more simple form. So remember, when you have a over 1, that, that you can just get rid of the 1. But we're going to take this negative, and we're going to put it up here. And the entire, the entire numerator is going to become negative. So this is going to be kind of strange. This is, these are the little things that, that algebra students really become frustrated by. So we're just going to put the uh, we're just going to put the negative up. So we're going to have to put parentheses around the x plus nine, and then you can see that it's just going to be uh, negative x plus nine because we can just get rid of the one. Anything over one, you, you just get rid of that one. And then you can finally distribute the negative 1, and it becomes negative x minus 9. That's the type of thing that really annoys students, because in the textbook, you're going to see this expression, but you're going to write this expression for your answer, and you're going to be confused. So um, I should put a, a big star by that problem so you can see that there's uh, special things happening, that uh, simplification at the end there. All right, on to number 30, we're going to try the uh, negative 1 rule one more time before you try one on your own. So we factor the quadratic in the top. We're going to use the negative 1 rule in the denominator and again if you're not sure that you use the negative one rule properly you just distribute the negative one back using the uh, the distributive rule so now we can cancel out 
Now it's very important to understand we cannot cancel out both of these x minus 4's, we can only cancel out one because there's only one x minus 4 in the bottom so we can only cancel out one in the top. And you're left with x minus 4 over negative 1 which is then equal to negative x plus 4 because a negative goes up and it distributes into these and changes the sign. Again, I know that's a dirty trick to, to uh, kind of rush through that, but uh, again, it just becomes negative x minus 4 and you get rid of the 1. And another way to think of it is when you divide by negative 1, you just uh, change the signs. So you can just change those signs. In the previous problem, we had uh, both addition signs, so we had to change both of those signs. and went from x plus 9 to negative x minus 9. So again, beware of those little... Uh, little uh, details. It's really the details that uh, make algebra so difficult. So now it's time for you to try attempt 31 and when you come back we'll do it together. Alright we're back. You have the difference of two squares on the top. What number times itself equals 64? That's 8. And in the bottom we're going to factor out a negative using the negative 1 rule. And by the way, you don't have to write a negative 1. You can just write uh, a minus sign. That's fine. Um, let's see, but I should probably write a negative 1 just so it doesn't confuse you. So now we can uh, cancel out. And we're left with x plus 8 over negative 1 which simplifies to negative x minus 8 and there you go all right so try number well if you got that one right good job if you didn't just go back and figure out what you did wrong so let's try 32 when you come back we'll do it together all right we're back um, I'm gonna go ahead and factor out the negative because I just know that that's what we're gonna be required to do so I don't run out of room and let's see, we're going to have negative 3 and negative 1. And so these are the common factors. Cancel those out. And now you're left with negative 1 on the top and x minus 1 on the bottom. And in this case, you don't have to combine the negative. You could take this negative and distribute it into the, into the uh, denominator if you wanted. But uh, in this case, you really don't need to move the negative at all. It's fine in the numerator because we can't get rid of the 1 when it's in the numerator. That's an important point. We cannot get rid of the 1 when it's in the numerator, only when it's in the, in the denominator. That's uh, another source of error for students. So if you, if you uh, made a mistake in that problem, that's okay. That's, that's very common to try to write uh, x minus 1 over negative 1 rather than negative 1 over x minus 1. These are all things that, uh, st that every student struggles, struggles with when they learn this stuff for the first time, so don't worry about it. All right, so now we're going to uh, uh, increase the difficulty here. So we're going to uh, combine even more types of factoring. So we're going to add in factoring out, factoring out a greatest common factor. So in all in all these uh, these next problems, we're going to we're going to factor out the GCF. So I think that's going to be four x to the fifth power. So that's the GCF, and I think that would be 28, 112 divided by 4 is 28. So I factored out the GCF in the top, and I'm going to factor out the GCF in the bottom, and I'm going to ch double check these to make sure I did it correctly. Alright, so just distribute back, make sure you did it correctly. And everything looks correct. Alright, so we factored out the uh, GCF in both the numerator and the denominator. So now we're going to continue to factor because, as you can see, we have quadratics. So we have to continue to factor those quadratics and we'll just leave the monomials 
the GCFs. So we'll factor the quadratic in the top. And we'll factor the quadratic in the bottom. And you can see we have um, a lot of things going on here. So I want you to understand that we have an expression here. We have a bunch of factors that can be uh, simplified. So that's uh, pre-algebra review, but we also have, uh, whoops, we also have common factors here. So we're going to cancel out the x plus 4s, but we're also going to cancel out some things here. So um, I guess I should just uh, mark those. Yep. So first of all, 4 divided by 2, that would be 2. And then x to the fifth over x to the third, you, you just subtract, so that would be x to the second. And the x plus 4s cancel out. And we're just left with x minus 3 in the bottom. Now, why did I put x minus 3 in the bottom without parentheses? Because everything else in the bottom canceled out. So I'm not multiplying x minus 3 times anything, so I can get rid of the parentheses. But in the top, I still have an expression left over. So I'm technically multiplying 2x squared times x plus 7, so I have to keep the parentheses on x plus 7. But uh, anyway, that's, that's what we're going to be doing for the... Uh, for most of the, the remaining uh, parts of the class. So as you can see, it's pretty uh, standard stuff. Same thing we're doing in the previous classes. All right, number 34, factor out the GCFs in the numerator and the denominator. And I'm going to try to stay within the lines here. And be aware that we have to factor out a negative in the bottom. So I'm going to double check that. And I can see I already did something wrong. We need x to the 6 there. All right, the bottom looks correct. And everything looks correct. All right, so now we just have to factor the quadratic. That's the only thing that we can uh, factor at this point that we haven't factored already. Whoops. All right, and cancel out. And of course, we can uh, cancel some of this stuff too. So 6 over negative 4, that would reduce to 2 over, or excuse me, 3 over 2. And we can just put the negative on on the side of the, uh, the fraction. That's the best place for it, probably. Just make sure it doesn't run into your equal sign. And x to the second in the purple, x to the second over x to the six. Again, we're, 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 we're uh, dividing. So six minus two is four, but the x is going on the bottom because there's more x's in the bottom than the top. And the blue factors cancel out, and you're left with x plus two in the, in the top. And that's pretty much it. That's all we can do for that problem. So do you see how we're using uh, a lot of the previous concepts? That's the name of the game when it comes to uh, this curriculum. So try number 35. And when you come back, we'll do it together. All right, we're back.
I'm going to try to write within the lines. And I think that's correct. So use the dis distribution rule to multiply back to see if we did that correctly. All right, it looks correct. So we factored out a greatest common factor. Now we're gonna factor the quadratics that are left inside. And we're gonna cancel out. So those uh, yellow numbers go away. And of course we can cancel out the uh, the blues. So 6 divided by 2 is 3. x over to the x to the fifth over x to the second is x to the third. And we got x plus 4 in the num in the numerator. Now we just have x minus 3 in the denominator. So if you got that answer, good job. Double check that. Everything looks right. So now we have to factor the difference two squares and the quadratic. So let's try O and I of foil in the, uh, the numerator, or excuse me, the denominator. Um, o is 4x, I is negative x, 4x minus x is a positive 3x. We don't want a positive 3x. We want a negative 3x, so we just have to change the signs. That looks correct. So now we get to cancel. Now comes the easy part. Twelve over eight that reduces to um, three over two. And we have an x in the bottom. Again, two power minus one power is one power. And there's more x's in the bottom than the top, so you get x in the bottom. So let's see here. I think that's it. And if you got that answer, good job. So why don't you try 37, and when you come back, we'll do it together. All right, we're back. Um, factor out a 10x to the seventh in the numerator. And factor out a negative eight x to the third. And so now we just have a quadratic in the numerator. And I've seen I think I've seen, I think we've seen that quadratic already today. Let's double check before we continue here. Everything looks right. 
Again, it's really important to double check everything here. Cancel out there and cancel out here. And we have five over, I'm just gonna put the, the negative in front there. Five over four and X to the fourth and the top. I'm gonna move this whole thing up. And that looks right. So we got that answer. Good job. Make sure that negative is visible. That's a kind of sloppy to put the negative so so small there. It's, it's really difficult to see. So I'm going to move that over slightly. If you, if you write your negative small like that, it's it's a good chance that. Uh, when you become a scientist, they're not going to see it, and that's going to be a, a big problem. Or if you become an engineer. All right. Again, if you got that answer right, good job. You're on the right track. All right, so try number 38, and when you come back, we'll do it together. All right, we're back. So we're going to factor out a 9, I believe. 9x squared. I want to double check that. All right, we're going to factor out a 12x to the fourth in the bottom. see here whoops I need a plus or and minus in the bottom let's check everything I'm going to check the O and the I of foil on the top everything looks correct so now I just cancel out cancel out all the colored parts So let's double check that. And if you got that answer, good job. All right. So for number 39, just be aware that you're going to have to factor out a negative in the top. It's not really considered the negative one rule because uh, it's not a it's not a binomial, a simplified binomial, but uh, it's pretty much the same thing as a negative one rule. Um, so try number 39, and when you come back, we'll do it together. All right, we're back. And I'll double check that later on. All right, so let's multiply back and double check. All right, I can see I made a mistake in the numerator. That should be minus two. See how important it is to check. All right. Looks correct. A 
and now we're ready to cancel out the uh, whoops that wasn't the common factor cancel out the common factors oops that's way too sloppy there got a nice big native sign there We still need our still need our parentheses because we're uh, we're multiplying. That negative sign was a little too big. There we go. So if you got that answer, good job. Just double checking there. It looks correct. All right. So um, you're going to factor out a negative in the bottom here. So be aware of that. And uh, also, there's uh, another important point here. When you're when we're uh, factoring the top, we're going to have to use the negative one rule. So uh, see if you can figure out how to use the negative one rule in the numerator. Because if you don't use if you don't factor out a negative no, a negative one here, then uh, the 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 factors are not going to be uh, common. So again, this doesn't look like we're factoring out a negative because uh, the, the, the first term is positive, but you're going to have to use the negative one rule here. You use the negative one rule when the first term is not, is not negative in most cases. So factor out a negative in the bottom because we have a, a, the first term is negative, but also factor out a negative in the top. And uh, when you come back, we'll do it together. All right, we're back. So I'm factoring out a negative 4x in the top. And I get negative 4 plus x. Well, that's it, negative 4 plus x. So let me multiply back. That looks correct. In the bottom, I'm going to factor out a negative, negative x to the ninth. Sorry, I'm being a little too sloppy here. Should be a negative 12. Multiply back. And it looks correct. So I know what you're going to be thinking. You're going to be thinking, this takes too long, and I don't like this. I don't want to do this. Um, but that's tough. These problems just take a while. You're going to have to double check and recheck and recheck. We have a quadratic in the bottom, and it's going to be negative 8 and minus 4, I believe. And that's correct. So even though these factors don't look uh, like they're common, they are. The terms are just rearranged. So I just want to be clear. x minus 4 is not the same thing as 4 minus x, but x minus 4 is the same thing as negative 4 plus x. So that can be really confusing. In fact, you want to pr probably take a screenshot of that. And I should make my 4s look like 4s. Or maybe I'll try 9, just to use an example. So this is, these are not equal, but these are equal. We're not going to do anything with the 4, really, just with the x's. And also, these negatives can cancel out. We have a negative divided by a negative, so the negatives just cancel out. And 
And just to make things symmetric, I'm going to go ahead and move that four to the center. So let's double check everything. Looks right. So if you got that answer, good job. All right, so you're going to have to factor out a negative in the top here. So go ahead and try uh, 41. And when you come back, we'll do it together. All right, we're back. So let's multiply back and uh, check our answer, or what we what we have so far. All right, that looks correct. So now we have to factor the quadratics. Should be a four actually. And that looks correct. And of course we now fact we now uh, cancel out. Again, all the colored parts are the parts that we're canceling out. Make that negative nice and big. All right. And that looks right. So if you got that answer, good job. So I'm going to have to lower this a little bit. So you're going to have to factor out a negative in the bottom. And you're going to use the negative 1 rule in the top. So you're going to factor out a negative in both the numerator and the denominator on problem number 42. So go ahead and try 42 and when you come back we'll do it together. Alright, we're back. So I'm going to factor out a negative 2x. So this is a similar problem uh, that we did. Actually, that should be a positive 32. And everything looks right. Now again, you can change the negative 4 plus x to x minus 4 if you want, but uh, that just requires more, more steps and more time. Unless you just want to rearrange it and erase it. Now again, negative 4 plus x is the same thing as x minus 4. So we're, we're uh, canceling out or reducing the colored parts.
So that should be correct. Let's double check. Yes, everything looks right. So if you got that answer, good job. All right, on to 43. Now something new is gonna happen on 43. Now in this problem, uh, we can factor out a GCF in the bottom, great, a greatest common factor, but we cannot factor anything in the top. At least we can't, uh, we can factor the top, but we can't factor a GCF out. So let's do the bottom first, because that's pretty much the same thing we've been doing. So that would be 2x cubed to be the GCF. I'm going to try to write in the, in the lines. Oops, that should be a 5. All right, now, now on the top, again, we cannot factor anything out, or we can't factor the uh, GCF, but uh, you should recognize this expression. It looks like a quadratic, but we have a fourth power and a second power. Now, uh, if there were an x here, then we could factor out a GCF, but there's not an x there. Or if we had uh, num coefficients with a common common factor, we could factor out something. But uh, again, we don't we don't uh, we don't have that situation. So this looks like a quadratic with a fourth and second power. So that means that's a special type of factoring that we did in previous class. So that factors to x squared and x squared. And what two numbers multiply to 40 and add up to 13? That would be 5 and 8. So again, uh, we did a previous class where we had that special type of uh, quadratic. All right, so we can see we have common terms here. And that's pretty much all we can do for that problem. There's nothing else to cancel out. Now again, you're going to be really tempted to cancel these x's out, but you can't do that because this is not 8 times x squared. It's 8 plus x squared. So there's really nothing you can do. So we're going to do two of these types of problems together, and then you can do two on your own. And the bottom is going to be that special type of quadratic. What two numbers multiply to 18 and add up to 11? But instead of x and x, you're going to have x squared and x squared. And cancel out. And there's really nothing more we can do. All right, so why don't you try number 45, and when you come back, we'll do it together. All right, we're back. Looks like I missed my 5 there. That's why it's so important to double check. So x's will, x squares will cancel out, but let's factor the, the bottom first. So again, we have this special quadratic with a fourth and a second power. So instead of 5x and x, we have 5x squared and x squared. So let's try 4 and 2. But we know it can't be that because, whoops, I forgot my parenthesis here. We know it can't be that because the, the top in the numerator, we have 5x squared minus 2. So it's going to be a minus 2 there. Plus 4, but let's just double check. So O is 20x squared and I is negative 2x squared. And whoops, I didn't put a negative there. So it should be negative 4. So 
So O is negative 20x squared and I is negative 2x squared. Add them together, you get negative 22x squared. So that looks correct. Let me just double check everything. And it looks right. But, uh, well, let's go ahead and cancel out. So we're going to cancel these and we're going to cancel these, but there's one more thing that we can actually factor because this is the difference of two squares. So that was kind of a tricky thing there. That was a dirty trick that I played. So on the top, there's nothing left, so we just write one. And that's a potential source of error for students. If they think there's nothing on the top, then they just flip the, the fraction upside down. And uh, that's not, not a good thing to do. So on the bottom, we're left with x squared minus 4. But again, like I said, we can factor that. So it's going to factor to x minus 2 times x plus 2. Because that's the difference of two squares. All right, so you got that answer. Good job. That was a tough one. All right, so try number 46. And when you come back, we'll do it together. All right, we're back. So let's multiply back and double check. And it looks like I have the wrong number there, so I need a 24 instead of a 12. All right, we're ready to go. But we have a special term here, an x to the fourth and x to the second, with no x's here. So that's a special quadratic. So it would be x squared and x squared instead of x and x. Looks like it's going to be positive uh, 8 and negative 3. Yeah, that looks correct. And cancel out the x squared plus 8 and the x and the 2x. And we're left with 1 in the top and 2 in the bottom and x squared minus 3. Now this is the difference of two squares, but it would be a square root, and we haven't learned that yet, so you, you really can't do much with that. So that would be your final answer. Um, so if you got that answer, good job. All right, so now we're going to something a little different. We have an expression with two variables. So let's try this one together. Again, this is just all review, so we're going to factor the, the top. That's a quadratic with two variables. And it looks like it's going to be 2y and 4y. Actually, 2y and 8y. And in the bottom, we're going to factor out the GCF. And you can see we have a common factor. But it's important to understand that there's really nothing else we can cancel out in this particular problem. Because, again, this is a sum. We're adding x and 2y. If we were multiplying x and 2y, like we're doing down in the denominator, then we could cancel out. But we can't cancel out these x's and we can't cancel out these, these y's. It doesn't work. All right, so why don't you try one of those problems? Try uh, 48, and when you're done, we'll do it together. All right, we're back. So the top is another quadratic with two variables. All 
That looks correct. Factor out the GCF in the bottom. And again, this gives us a clue for what it's going to be, but we have to always double check. And that looks correct, so now we just cancel out. All right, so on to 49. Looks like we're almost done here. We just have uh, six more problems, it looks like. So for number 49, uh, we don't have more than one variable, but we are going to have that uh, special case where you have a quadratic. And uh, you're going to have um, a fourth power and a second power. So let's try uh, 49 together. So I'm going to get my calculator and divide 80, 85 by 5. I get 17 because we're going to factor out a 5. X to the 7th. And I'll double check that later. We're going to factor out a negative, um, negative 2. X to the 5th it looks like in the bottom. So we need to double check that because a lot going on there. All right, that looks correct. And in the numerator, we have that special case where you have a fourth power and second power. But in the denominator, we just have to we have a regular uh, quadratic. So let's try the denominator first. Let's try three x and 2x, they multiply to 6x squared, and then we'll try minus 5 and uh, plus 1. So it try uh, test O and I of FOIL, o would, be, o would be 3x and I would be negative 10x, and it looks like I got lucky on that one, it worked. But in the top, we're going to have not x and x, but we're going to have x squared and x squared, because it's a fourth power and a second power. So uh, let's see here. Let's try 2 and 2, and we'll try um, uh, negative 4 and positive 1. Actually, I'm going to switch that a little bit. Let's try switching the, the 4. And actually, I need negatives on both these. So that didn't work, so we're going to have to get rid of these 2s. We'll try x squared and 4x squared and that doesn't work so we're gonna have to switch the 4 and the 1 and it looks like that works and let's just double check everything I think that's correct But as you can see, nothing really cancels out except the uh, the first uh, monomials, the, the GCFs. But we're going to keep those for now. And what we're going to do is we're going to uh, factor x squared minus 4. That's the difference of two squares. Doesn't really help us to cancel anything out, though. And then we're going to factor the difference of two squares here. And you can see that a 2x plus 1 cancels out.
So that was kind of a big one there. Some would say that that's overkill, but it's good practice. It's not bad to, uh, to have a little overkill when it comes to these extremely important concepts in your math education. So why don't you try number 50? That's another one of those uh, challenging problems. And when you come back, we'll do it together. All right, we're back. Now you probably realize that uh, a calculator would come in handy with these. And it looks like 12x is not going to work. We'll try 6x. And now let's factor out something in the bottom. So I'm going to get my calculator here. Let's see. I think it's going to be 4. 144 divided by 4 is 36. Pretty sure that's going to be it. Yep, looks like that's going to be it. So I'll just uh, double check here. Make sure our signs are correct. That looks right. I'm just going to try, try uh, 3 and 2. O is 4x, I is 3x, add to 7x, that's correct. And then we're just going to factor the, the bottom. But again, we have a fourth power and second power quadratic. So I'm going to try 2x squared and 2x squared. And minus 6 and minus 6. Well, actually, let's see. It doesn't look like any of those are going to work because nothing in the numerator is going to cancel out. So let's try... Uh, let's try minus actually I think it's going to be 1 and 4 instead of 2 and 2 so we'll try 4x squared and x squared these problems take some work they take some uh, some attempts the attempts may fail so you have to try again and let's try uh, let's see here all right, so now we're going to continue to factor in the denominator. And we have the difference of two squares, so that will be 2x minus 3 and 2x plus 3. And we have the difference of two squares again, so that will be x minus 2 and x plus 2. So a lot going on here. So we can cancel out the uh, 2x plus 3s. And we can cancel out x plus 2s also. I'm going to do a different color for that one. And of course we cancel out the, the x's and the 6 and the 4. So we get uh, 3 over 2, x to the 6 in the bottom. And so on and so forth. So that was a colossal problem. That was a challenging one. So if you got that answer, good job. If you didn't, that's okay. Most students would not would not do too well on that problem. But you're going to be the best in the world. So uh, if you got that right, good job. If you didn't, that's okay. Just figure out what you did wrong. All right, so four more problems. Now we're going to factor by grouping. So we're going to group these first two terms. 
and factor out an x squared. And we're going to group these second two terms, factor out, uh, factor out a 4, and double check. And that's a good sign because we have two factors that are exactly the same, 3x plus 2 and 3x plus 2. If you didn't have those common factors, it, we, we, that means we did something wrong. So now we have a quadratic in the denominator. We can go ahead and factor that. That should be 3x plus 2, I know, because it's going to have to cancel out something here. So O is negative 27x, and I is 2x, so that... Uh, that doesn't work. So let's see here. Actually, no, that does work. So that's perfect. So now we're going to factor out the 3x plus 2 in the numerator. Again, this is all review, factoring by grouping. And you're left with x squared plus 4. And you can see we have a common factor. And our final answer is x squared plus 4 over x minus 9. And the x squared plus 4 is not the difference of two squares, because it's a x squared plus 4, not x squared minus 4. All right, so I'm going to move some of these down so we have some more room. All right, let's try one more together, and you can try a couple on your own, then we'll be done for the day. So you have a regular old quadratic in the top. And that's not going to work, so we'll try switching the 7. Looks like that's right. So on the bottom, we're going to factor the, we're going to group the first two terms and factor out the greatest common factor. And it looks like we have the same factor that we did in the previous problems. And double check. Everything looks right. So now we're going to factor out factor out the three x plus two in the denominator. And as you can see, we have a three x plus two. So that's a very similar problem to the previous problem we did. And you're left with x minus 7 over x squared plus 3. All right, so time for you to try some. And be aware that you're going to need to use the negative 1 rule in the numerator on this problem. So go ahead and try 53. It's a factor by grouping problem. And when you come back, we'll do it together. All right, we're back. So I'm going to go ahead and factor out the negative 1, because I know I have to do that. I guess it might be possible that we won't have to do it, but uh, we'll see. And factor out 2x squared from the first two terms. And factor out 5 
from the second two terms. And then we have a common factor, x minus 3. So it turns out that we did need to use the negative 1 rule. Factor out the x minus 3 in the bottom, and you're left with 2x squared plus 5. And believe it or not, these factors are the same. The terms are just uh, switched. So those cancel out, and we're left with negative 1 over 2x squared plus 5. So if you got that answer, good job. You're way ahead of the game. Um, all right, last problem. You're going to have to use the negative 1 rule again here. So attempt, 20, or attempt, attempt uh, 54, when you come back, we'll do it together. All right, we're back. So I'm using the negative 1 rule. And factor out 2x squared. And factor out 3 and the, uh, the other terms. And then we can factor out the x minus 2 and the top. All right. So now, again, believe it or not, um, these terms are the same. They're, the, they're just uh, switched around. The, 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 uh, the two terms inside those binomials are just switched around, but the negative 2 plus x is the same thing as x minus 2. So now we have 2x squared plus 3, and there's nothing in the bottom except that negative, so we have to put a 1. You can't just put negative. That doesn't mean anything, so you got to put your 1 there. And now this is a special situation where the negative kind of just goes up and the 1 disappears and you just distribute. So another way to write that is negative 1 times 2x squared plus 3. I know that seems weird, but uh, you'll get used to that. So that's the final answer for that problem. So if you got that answer, good job. I know that last step was something different. But uh, you're just going to have to get used to uh, bringing that negative up. You can bring the negative up and just distribute it to those terms. So that was the uh, class today. This is all the work that we did today. If you'd like to take screenshots of these pages to help you with your homework or to study for tests, go ahead and do that now. Here's the homework. Get a screenshot of these first two pages and a screenshot of these last two pages. Get that homework done completely, correctly, neatly, and keep it in order in your binder. And remember, if you don't do the homework, it's 100% guarantee you're going to learn absolutely nothing in this entire course. So get that homework done, and I look forward to seeing you in the next class.